Traditionally, on Ash Wednesday, but especially on the first Friday of Lent, the Church invites us to meditate on the importance of fasting, fasting, abstinence, but especially in a weight fasting, because abstinence, which consists in not eating meat, for some who like fish, very much is a feast. Fasting, on the other hand, affects us all, of course, some more than others, because there are people who see with critical eyes that the Church put two fast days a year, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, and instead have no problem and are willing to do all kind of fastings and sacrifice to lose weight. The Church proposed two days of fasting a year, obviously not much, and it does so as a symbol to unite us to Christ crucified, to experience something, but come on, something very light in our flesh, what Jesus experienced, something very light, not even a scratch, compared to what our Lord had to suffer in the torture of discovering our crucifixion. But He wants us to notice, to experience this something, even if it's small. Above all, He shows us the weight, because it is not only a question of two days a year. That is what is obligatory, but it's not the more is forbidden. He shows us the weight. If you don't control your body, your soul will not be free. There is a relationship between soul and body. We are a united unity. This is what the Catholic anthropology teaches. The human being is a unity. It is a unity of body and soul both unique and unrepairable. Contrary to what other religions teach, there is no transmigration of souls, as if the souls were us and the bodies were just wrappings, with chains without any problem. I am my body and I am my soul. And there is a relationship between that soul and that body, so that if you do not control your body, you will not control your soul either. That is to say, if your body, if you are not the master of your body, you are going to be doing things that harm your soul. That is why the Church also insists on fasting. It is not a joke to control your body with what in spiritual theology is called asceticism. Controlling the body will help you control your passions, your intents, therefore your soul, your person, to be in God's grace, to be clean of sin. Control the body with penance, not an exaggerated penance or a penance harmful to your health. Evidently, the Church has never said that, but it does control the body with penance. In the time of Lent, certainly all year long, but in the time of Lent is traditionally an appropriate time for that. Therefore, I propose that each one of us should look for what corporal penance we can do during this Lent time. I insist, not a penance that will harm your health or that will ruin your temper and turn you into a person who is irritated and who annoys those who live with him. No. But do something during the time of Lent to help control your body and so that afterwards it will be easier for you to resist temptations. This is asceticism. But fasting and penance cannot be limited to the body alone. The Church has also insisted very much, as in the traditional, and it is even in the Old Testament, that the activities of the corporal type have to be united to the activities of the charitable type. You fast, you do abstinence, you deprive yourself from candy, you deprive yourself from smoking, Two examples. There are more. You deprive yourself of that. Yes, but you still have bad temper. Either you remain selfish, or you shut your ears to the people's need around you, or you remain a person who criticizes others, even slanders. The fasting that God wants, it is of the body. Penance of the body is necessary. We must do it. But we must also fast, for example, from anger. We must fast from insult. We must fast also from 
criticism, we must fast from envy. Therefore, at the beginning of Lent, we must make a program for ourselves. Later, it will be fulfilled or not, but it is necessary to make a program. It is a tradition, and it is a tradition that stupidly has been forgetting in recent years. Make yourself a program of corporal penance, is must. I insist that it doesn't harm your health, and that it doesn't have consequences on those who live with you for them to have to pay what you are doing. Make yourself a program of corporal penance. Try to fulfill it, and then make yourself a program of spiritual penance. I'm going to try not to criticize. I'm going to try not to complain, and not to get angry. Try not to, and try to be more generous. I'm going to try to be less consumerist. Everyone has to know where their shoe hurts, when their problems are. I have never made a corporal penance to stop smoking because I never smoke in my life. Therefore, there will be people that are things that are enormously easy for them, both from the body and the spirit, and others that are easy for you, it is much more difficult for them. Each one of us has to make its own program. And with all this, I repeat, in order to unite ourselves more to Christ, in order to be docile to the call of the Holy Spirit, to respond to the vocation that each one of us has, the vocation to holiness, to be able to be saints, to be able to love God as He deserves to be loved, in order to be able to think this good God, we have to control our bodies and we have to make our souls ready to obey what the Lord asked us. So the